Okay, folks, I'll get started. Welcome, thanks for coming to my talk. My name is Pino De Candia. I'm a software architect at Huawei. I work uh, with folks in the uh, Tel Aviv Research Center. And my talk is about uh, a new project we're trying to launch. It's named after the author, the original author of SSH. That's his first name, Tatu. And the idea is to think about how can we do SSH better in clouds, easier management, more secure. And we have some ideas, and I think we can do a lot more as well beyond that. So I'll just dive right in. What are the problems with the SSH in OpenStack today? So when you first SSH to a VM, there's no way for you to, uh, to know what signature, the, what signature the, the host key has. And so you have a man in the middle vulnerability right off the bat. You have no way to uh, automate SSH access for users. So you have to do it yourself, some, uh, build your own tools. You need to allocate floating APs per instance or manage bastions. And there's no integration with Keystone, with identity management of OpenStack itself. So just one at a time. I'll go through those again pretty quickly. You've seen this, um, this warning that the key fingerprint of the host you're trying to stage into is such and such. And it asks you, are you sure you want to continue connecting? How many of us actually go and check the fingerprint? And how would you do that if you don't have password access into the VM, right? So you go to the console, but you can't get in anyway because you don't have password access. So maybe you cook up some scheme to do that. But most of us would just say, yeah, it's OK. Um, this uh, issue of public key management. So when you launch the VM, you drop in the key pair. So your public key is placed in the account in the, uh, in the virtual machine or the host. Now, what if you have multiple users needing to connect in, to, to SSH into that VM? Do you share the public? Do you share your key pair? Do you install another key pair once you sort of you know, use one to see, as a seed, and then someone goes in and adds other key pairs? And if you do, do that, so either you're sharing key pairs or you're adding, pair, adding public keys in the host, who manages those? Who takes them out once, they, once the user leaves the group or doesn't need access anymore? Who cleans up? So you're building some tools to do that, or you're doing it in an ad hoc way. The floating IPs, um, clearly lots of floating IPs. Every VM needs one. We have IP ex exhaustion. So we use IPv6, but not everyone is, is, is ready for that. So you use bastions. Bastions are a good, a good way to avoid um, floating IP use. Uh, on the other hand, who manages the bastion, who owns it, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, this question of integration with Keystone. So if you're, if you're an enterprise and you have an LDAP server, um, PKI infrastructure, OK, you've got, you've got a solution. But what if you're a small company, a uh, client of a public cloud? What are you using to match the identities you have in your cloud with the accounts that you have on your servers? And if you change permissions in the cloud, shouldn't that be reflected in the accounts on the servers? That would be an easy way of, of, uh, of managing uh, access consistently. So a partial solution to the things I've talked about is SSH certificates. They're not new. They've been available for a while since OpenSSH 5.4. There are certificates for both users and hosts. I'll explain how they work. Um, the idea, the basic idea is that the users and the clients of, uh, sorry, the, the, the servers and the clients should not trust each other. They should trust a certificate authority. Okay, it's a well understood concept, um, and that eliminates the 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 many to many uh, um, the n squared problem of all the servers needing to know, to know all the users and vice versa. So this uh, diagram tries to show you, uh, if you're not familiar with SSH certificates, how they work. On the left is an SSH user. Uh, server uh, or box. So here you have the, your familiar SSH key. So I have a key here, key.pub, the, the public uh, key, the private key, and then you have the known host file. And known host file usually have a series of lines that have the fingerprints of all the hosts you've connected to and that you rec you've connected to once, you trusted once, and you continue trusting and forever unless you clean the known host file. Um, what's different in SSH certificates is the known host file won't have the signatures of servers. It will have the signatures of certificate authorities. 
So essentially you're saying, I trust hosts that are vouched for by a specific certificate authority. And you can have several of these lines. Similarly, um, oh, and then of course you need a, uh, a uh, so, so that, that's, um, that's in green because it will trust certificates like this one on the right here. Can you see my mouse, right? Um, that are signed by the green certificate authority. That's the host certificate authority. Okay, and for, um, it's cleanest if we separate the host, the sign, signing certificate authority for, authority for hosts from users. And, and on, on, the, on the servers, it's similar. The, the host has its key pair. It get, gets its certificate signed. It trusts the certificate authority for signing users, right, the red one. So this one down here, and, and this user has a red certified uh, public key. Um, just that its configuration is a little bit different. So for example, the uh, host certificate authority uh, sorry, um, the, the, the user certificate authority needs to be placed in the SSHD uh, pointed to by a key in the SSHD config. Okay, I won't go into details, but it, it's, it's, it's just a bit of a different configuration from the users. Um, okay, so this, this takes care of the problem of the man in the middle, and it takes care of, of, of uh, some of the um, um, problems of sort of having too many keys to manage. Uh, but this still requires management. You need some tools to set it up and so on. And this is what Tatu is all about. So Tatu's goal is to make it easy to use SSH certificates. Okay, so we added uh, an OpenStack, C uh, OpenStack CLI commands and horizon panels so that, the, uh, so that you can discover the host certificate authority public key, so that you can look at user certificates, you can revoke them. Um, we automate the SSH setup on the instances. This is the third point. So there's a little script that we deliver via cloud in it. So there's a, there's a static uh, script that pulls some more dynamic stuff. So we're using both static um, and uh, dynamic vendor data in Nova, and I'll explain that in more detail later. But basically, there's a little script that runs. It's a cloud init script, and it sets up accounts according to your uh, roles in, in, uh, in Keystone. Uh, this is just experimental. It may not be the right way to set up accounts. It's a discussion that the community needs to have. What accounts should be set up on servers? How is that decided? How can we, we configure that via OpenStack? Um, OK, and then of course, if roles change, if you do believe that roles in Keystone should be reflected on, in, in accounts on the servers, then if, if roles change, then uh, you may need to disable keys that are too permissive, or users may need to come back and get new certificates that are signed and have more permissions. And finally, we'd ideally manage the bastions for you so you don't have to set up your own, your own SSH bastions, and we'd manage DNS if, with bastions, you're, you're, you're sharing the bastion across many, many uh, servers, and the servers no longer have IPs, so easier to use DNS to access your host instead of having to remember IP and port pairs. So I'll, I'll, I'll skip. Just forward, give you a sort of a project status. This is really more a, a, of a prototype at the moment. Uh, we do have the code in OpenStack. Um, as with other projects, we have three, um, three code repositories, one for the dashboard, one for the Python client, and the other for the main project. That's just uh, the, 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 the way things uh, are done in OpenStack. Uh, we have a DevStack plugin, so you can just go and run it. There's, there's some uh, documentation. It, so the DevStack works right out of the box. Uh, we have experimental support for bastions, but only with Dragonflow. Um, there's a cool PAM USSH um, module that was uh, open sourced by U Uber, and I have some experimental code that actually uses that so that, if, so that if, if a user is logged in and has pseudo access, and, they, and their key is revoked while they're logged in, the pseudo access is cut. I don't know how to cut the connection altogether. Maybe uh, someone will, will, will tell me how to do that. Uh, and finally, this experimental relationship between roles and user accounts. So I set up user accounts automatically based on the roles. Um, but again, not ready for production, needs lots of, uh, of, of uh, lots more work. I'm gonna show you live what this looks like, but I just wanted to sh sort of just show you some snapshots of the panels. This is the certificate authority panel where you can see that for every project, every project is its own certificate authority. Okay, so you're in a multi-tenant cloud, you're not sharing certificate authorities across tenants, otherwise you'd be able to access each other's VMs. So this is the unit of, of, of sort of, uh, of, um, of access. Okay, and we can talk about also that granularity. You know, is it, if, 
should I have access to any VM uh, or to the same account in any VM in my tenant? Maybe that, that's too coarse granularity for, for you. Um, there's a list of user certificates. I'll go through this. I want to just point out there's a revoke button. Uh, anything we, we can do via the, the, pa the, the panels, of course, we should be able to do via CLI, and I'll show you the CLI commands later. Um, and similarly, you can look at the list of hosts uh, and the certificates that have been generated for hosts. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of detail. I'm going to sort of dive into the user SSH setup of sort of how it works behind the scenes. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The, this is not behind the scenes. User setup is, is something you'll have to do. So uh, you can do via the panel. So just going back a second, SSH users, you see that bar at the top, right? Um, you, can, uh, you can drop, oh, sorry, you can push the create user SSH button, and uh, a, mo um, uh, a modal comes up that allows you to put in your public key, and it generates a certificate for you, which you copy into the appropriate location, OK? Um, if you want to do it with CLI, it looks more like this. So focus first on the, on, the, on the bottom command that I've surrounded by red, OK? OpenStack SSH, user certificate, create, OK? And I'm passing the public key, OK? Implicit in this command is that I belong to a certain project and I'm a certain user, OK? That's usually something that you put in the credentials uh, uh, in, the, uh, in, in variables. So that's implicit in the command. And then I'm writing it to this uh, demo key cert.pub. There's a convention where the certificate is the public key name without the pub part followed that dash cert, OK? Because that's how uh, the SSH client looks for the certificate corresponding to the key pair. Um, what the other command is showing you is that the, you're, you're, you're saying uh, echo this line okay, into the known host file. You only have to do this once per project. You're basically saying, open, th this is the command, OpenStack SSH certificate authority show. Okay? And what that's asking is, can I have the public, key for my, the public key of the certificate authority for my project? And that public key is getting written into the known host file. Okay, the rest is just SSH uh, key pair generation with the SSH key gen uh, command. Okay? And if you want to SSH ads, so you don't have to keep typing in your password. And you should be, using, you should be generating a password for your SSH keys. It's good, good practice. Okay. Um, so let me just skip forward for a second. This is what the known host file looks like. At certificate authority, the star means for any VM, you can restrict it to a domain. Um, and then the, uh, uh, the public, uh, public key of the, of the um, certificate authority for, that signs hosts. So the, the workflow here is that the user asks Tatu, can you sign my public key, whether using the CLI or, or, or the, the panel? Um, Tatu goes and fetches the certificate authority private key from Barbican. So this integration already exists with Barbican. Um, for those of you that don't, that don't know, Barbican is the OpenStack project for storing secrets safely. It can also do things like encrypt volumes and so on. It can also generate keys. I haven't chosen to have uh, user keys generated by Barbican, OK? Um, but that, that's something we could do in the future. Um, after fetching the private key from, from, uh, from Barbican, the, uh, um, we fetch the roles from Keystone, and we generate a certificate. We store, store it in, open st in, in MySQL, and we give the key to the customer. And the customer puts it uh, uh, in, in, their, in their SSH directory, OK? This is what a certificate looks like. OK, you usually examine a certificate by running this uh, SSH keygen dash capital LF command. And I want to just point out that you have um, the, uh, the signing CA in here above the red circle. And then I'm using serial numbers. Serial numbers are a very efficient way later. If we have serial numbers, we can do very efficient um, uh, key revocation using serial numbers. And the principles are a way of, of um, um, giving permissions to users, so describing what permissions the certificate gives the user. Uh, in this case, just the roles that are set on that, um, on the user who asked for the, SSA, for the certificate at that moment in time, OK? Again, if we take away one of the uh, ro roles, then the certificate should, is immediately revoked. I've got a background process that, that is listening for, uh, um, uh, for updates and, and we'll, we'll revoke the certificate automatically. OK, so now what happens when a new instance is generated? 
So Nova uh, has this concept of, of dynamic vendor data, okay? So Nova will ask uh, Tatu on every instance create to, to give it the vendor data for that, for that, uh, for that instance. In fact, it asks multiple times because it fills various versions of, of, of vendor data. So Tatu will, will answer each, each one the same way and populate it with the same data. Um, so Tatu first fetches the roles, all the roles in that project, okay? The reason is that I need to know every possible role that, that, that since I've, I've decided, and we can talk about what to, if this is really makes sense, but I've decided that every role in the project should become an account on the servers, right? So I need to gather those up. Um, I'm going to create a token for the host. Okay, now we have this sort of chicken and the egg problem. I'm not talking to the host yet, but when the host talks to me, how do I know which host is talking to me? How do I know to trust it? Okay, so it's a one-time token that's being generated here. Okay, that's uh, um, uh, a simple way of doing, of, of, of limiting the, uh, the risk that, that, that will have a man in the middle attack on, on host uh, um, on creation, on instance creation. Okay, follow me here. From three, we go back to the left-hand left side. We're returning the vendor data to Nova. Nova writes it to config drive. Very important not to serve the vendor data via metadata API because it's not secure, okay? It's open. So instead, write it to config drive. Nobody else can see it. Then when the host comes up, it mounts the config drive uh, and, and therefore can see all the information we put in there. We give it SSH setup scripts. We give it a bunch of configuration that makes those setup scripts dynamic, uh, dy dy dynamically change their behavior. Maybe you want to use PAM, the PAM module, maybe you don't. Uh, it, gives, it gives the host that one-time token, that one-time password that it will use to actually get its certificate signed. And it gives it a list of account names for the accounts it should be setting up. Okay, so it's that one-time password you want to keep secure, by the way. Um, so then when, the, then the server, when it, when it starts up and it runs that init script, it asks Tatu, would you sign my public key, please? And it includes that one-time password at that moment. Tatu then goes and fetches uh, the host's CA private key from Barbican, again, because Tatu doesn't want to store that private key itself, and uses it to sign their certificate with the correct roles, which it put, pulls from OpenStack, it's, it, it, it stored them before. Uh, sorry, sorry, from Keystone, it stored them before, and it can return it, right? So the, the roles are sort of stored with the token for that host. Um, and then there's this, this, this constant process whereby if you revoke keys, the, the server is constantly asking Tatu every, every 60 seconds now, Tatu, would you give me a, would, would you uh, refresh my list of revoked keys so that I can uh, so the server itself can block them. Okay, so this is the idea of, question? Yeah, it, uh, it does that via a cron job that was set up in that vendor data? Correct, the scripts in the vendor data set up the cron job, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so the, the idea of, of this, this is a poor man's bastion. Bastions should be virtual machines, and then, and then SSH has this, this command, uh, jump proxy command to do uh, uh, very secure um, uh, proxying uh, bastions of SSH. And, and, and I also say that I think the correct, we can debate this, but I think it's correct to use virtual machines. And in fact, I would say that only, that SSH should only be allowed via a bastion. And you can use security groups to, to, to enforce that because that way you can have a single point of policy enforcement. Okay, we're not there yet in the project, but that's, 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 uh, an, that's a strong opinion I hold. In the meantime, just to, to demonstrate the, uh, um, the idea, I used Dragonflow, one of the Neutron plugins, to uh, create a, a, a port address translation bastion, okay? So you don't get the, the, the jump proxy part, right, where you can enforce policy. It's just a, a layer four translation, but it does save floating IP addresses. I won't demo that today, but the idea is that user A here will use port 50 on, on one IP, public floating IP address to reach host A and a different port on a different floating IP address to, to reach the same host. Okay, so you have multiple paths to the same host. So we're using two floating IPs, right? Two, two port address translations. I can serve, I can, I can, I'm, I'm sharing these bastions across uh, any number of tenants. If, we implement, if I implemented this with load balancing, I'd probably need one floating IP, one load balancer per tenant, okay? And then since you're seeing now that users are not SSHing into port 22 in, in, when, when they use the bastion, they're not gonna remember, and these IP addresses are not tied to the, so, so it, it's good, to, so I have uh, uh, also experimental code that uses DNS SRV records, 
where it can pull the SCRV record and find out for that host uh, behind the scenes what is the, uh, port, the IP port pair that it should be using to access it. Okay, and I'll just skip that. That's, that's the integration with d designate the DNS as a service uh, in OpenStack. I, I have a wrapper script here, SRV SSH, right, where you can log, uh, I, I was using root at the time, root uh, SSH into my VM1 at demo, demo project, and then there's some DNS domain which is configurable, right? And that, and that wrapper, uh, which you may not want to use, but that wrapper will go and, uh, it, it's, it's in the project, and it will go and do an, an, a DNS uh, SRV lookup, and then it will do, launch SSH with, that, with, with the, the port IP pair that it, that it gets back. So if you successfully log in using certificates, this is what it looks like. So up here, I've got the dash V on the SSH command. Okay, you should see somewhere in the in the uh, uh, in the verbose output that the client declares, "I've found the certificate authority key uh, uh, for the for the uh, um, for the server in my known host file." So I trust the CA that the host is presenting me. So that host that that server is is uh, is, is is trustworthy. And then later, it goes and offers uh, the public key for uh, key 22 down here. Okay, the server saying no, that's no good. Here are some other authentication methods that can continue. It offers the RSA certificate, and the server says accepts the key. Okay, and that's the uh, uh, and it's the same for every for every uh, VM. Okay, it's more like a stand um, like a standard string. Okay, so in the background, I already said that. A daemon is reacting to uh, notifications on the Oslo message bus. On project creation, um, new CA, new certificate authority keys need to be created. If a user is deleted, all their, all their uh, certificates need to be revoked. If a, ro if a, a, a role assignment is removed, again, we might need to re remove, uh, revoke certain certificates, but not others, which might not use that role. And, and of course, host deletion cleanup. Okay, now I'm gonna skip to the, how am I doing on time? I'm gonna skip to the uh, demo. Um, and then we'll come back to the summary. Okay. So, so again, you've seen this before, but it wasn't live. So the, the certificate authorities here, there's one per project. Okay, if I go and create a project, so here, so here, here I'm logged in as the demo. So uh, what I'm not doing in, in, in the panels right now is I'm not filtering by project and user. Okay, so any project, any user right now can see all the others, all the, all the SH keys that have been created, all the projects and so on. So that's something I, I, I didn't do. I'm, I'm, I'm new to Angular. This is AngularJS. Um, but so just to show you how this works, if I come here and I create a new project, See, here I'm logged in as admin. Um, domain ID name. Okay, let's create that project. Okay, so here it is down here in the list of projects in the admin. Um, actually, we can maybe look for it right here. So the SSH uh, panel group is, 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 is visible to everyone. Um, and here are the certificate authorities. And here you can see that the certificate authority is created down here. Okay. Again, because I'm not so good at AngularJS, you'd have to scroll all the way here to see to find the user public key. Okay. Um, but you're able to copy paste uh, these keys into your. In, you, you don't really need the user public key. You need the host public key, and you can paste that into your known host file. Uh, so going back to the demo user in the demo project. Um, okay, so user certificates. Um, this is a little bit different from the screenshot I showed before. Um, we've got serial numbers. Right now, all of these were created in the demo project, uh, just out for simplicity. That's what I, when I was playing with it. But several users. So there's demo, Pino, Pippo, Pippo, and at diff and they have different principles because as I play with it, at different times, I'm sort of you know taking away 
um, roles or giving the user roles just to show that the principles change on the fly. And some of these certificates were already revoked. You can see in this column. Um, and so we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll be revoking one uh, in a second. Um, just to go through the panels a little bit more. So the host panel, right now there's only a single VM. Okay? And these two things are not being used because we're not using Dragonflow, so we're not using SRV records. The, the DNS integration doesn't make sense if you're not using a PAT bastion, uh, sorry, a bastion, uh, and nor, nor do I have an IP for the bastion. The, the, similarly, uh, if there were bastions, they'd be listed here. There aren't any. And the host certificates right now, again, only one host certificate because I only have one server running. All right, so let's go to the... Uh, Okay, so Okay, so if I show you my messy SH directory, okay, I've been playing with lots of keys. I name my keys such that the serial number, the serial ID in the certificate is is uh, is appended to the end of the key name. That way I can always revoke and I know which ones are revoked and which which uh, which correspond to, to to revoked keys. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you so what I want to point out here is I'm SSHing into the account member. Member is the role. And that account was automatically created on the server. I, I launched the server before uh, the session. Um, I'm not using SSH agent right now, just so that everything is really visible. Uh, for those of you who don't know SSH agent, it just saves you the trouble of typing your passwords again and again and again. Um, and it also, you need SSH agent, by the way, if you try the Uber PAM module, because the PAM module will try to call back and re-authenticate, so it needs to have that socket. And if you don't do agent forwarding and have the agent running, then you can't do the, uh, the, the, the re-authentication. Uh, let me just add the flag dash V here. Cross my fingers. Okay, and it's asking me for my password, from, from, from my key password. So that, that's, that's the user experience I showed you before, but now I'm just gonna show you live if I can see. Okay, so here we have the found CA key. Okay, and this is what prevented the uh, warning that said, I don't recognize this host. Do, 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 you, do you want to continue? And further down in the output, you can see that um, here we offered, the, the, the client offered the certificate and the server accepted it. Okay. So now I'll just exit out, out of that and show you that, for example, if I go back and look at that, um, that key, that certificate I'm using is number uh, five, right? So here in this list, five, this certificate will give me, will let me access any of these roles. So I'll try to uh, SSH into audit. Hmm. Let me try a different one. And I'm not saying that works, it's buggy. Okay, so maybe the other role wasn't created in, in this, in this uh, project, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have to go debug that. Um, and, and I wanted to show you the uh, known host file. Okay, there it is, uh, let me do that again. Okay. So just like I showed you in the slides, the known host file has only the certificate authority public key, nothing else. And it's not asking me to add new, new, new server public keys. Uh, okay, so I wanted to show you a revocation. How does that work? So we're using this, this key number five. Um, note that both four and five are, are not revoked right now. So I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna revoke five and show you it doesn't, it can't log in anymore. That's the one we've been using. And I'll show you that four still works. So here we go. Okay, again, my Angular skills are not that great, so I have to do a manual refresh. And now you can see that key five is, is now true. It's revoked. Now in the background, there's polling, so we may still be able to SSH in using this. And indeed we can. And hopefully if I do this a few more times, it'll say no. There you go. So it didn't ask me for my password for the password of the of the uh, key, 
um, it tells me, nope, you can't SSH in with that. So, and just to show you that, just to keep me honest, uh, key number four only has permission, only has the principal member. So I'm just gonna change this and there you go. Oh, that was key five. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna go key four. Key four and we're in, okay? The last thing I could do is, is just show you that if I, if I do something like, so from the admin panel, if I come here and I uh, change the user permissions, okay, so just, uh, let's just take a look at this again. So, people, user people has, uh, has this principal member, this, this member role. Um, so I come over here to the demo project, which is uh, what we're using right now, and I manage the members. I'm going to remove, um, remove that role assignment and save. Okay, that still shows revoked false. Let's see if it, if it, if it refreshes. Uh, sorry, if it uh, switches. Okay, and there you go. Now, it's been revoked as well. So I come back here, and I'm still, so it, took, it, it takes a little bit to, 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 change, to revoke, right? But then the service only needs to learn about it, so it's still letting me in. Nope. Um, tell you what, I'll describe something else, and then I'll come back and see if it still works. Uh, I was going to say that, of course, the way I'm using the principles is very different from the standard way. The standard way of using the principles is that you have a directory in, on the server that maps the principles to account names, okay? Um, it's a bit more complicated than that, but that, that's the idea. Okay, one more time. Okay, permission denied. This time it didn't, didn't give me the chance to put my password in. Um, I think that, that I'll, I'll stop there in terms of demo. I, would, I wanted to show you how the PAM module would block sudo. Um, but in fact, I don't even have sudo access now because the PAM module is, is, is broken at setup. So in, inside the server, if I were to show you the log message, it shows that the, the, the PAM setup failed. So in fact, it can't authenticate at all uh, sudo commands right now. Um, okay, so back to the wrap up. Um, So just, just to recap, right, the current SSH experience in OpenStack is that you generate your key pair, you upload it to OpenStack, and then you, la and, and, and then you launch the VM. And the, the, an OpenStack will place the key pair inside the server, but only in a specific account, right? So you ha only have access to that own account. So if, you're, if you launch an Ubuntu server, you're, 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 you get um, root access. If you're in Fedora, you have to go into the Fedora uh, account. Um, then when you SSH into the VM, step four, you get this, this, this nasty warning. And then in step five, when colleagues come and go, there, there's, no, there's no support. You've got to write your own tools to keep that, to keep to, if you really want to do security properly. Um, and usually these things end up being stale, and so we get old keys that hang out for, for weeks or months. Um, with Tatu, you generate your key pair. That's something you're already doing. Uh, but you get it signed by the project CA. And then you put the CA's host public key in the known host file, and you launch VMs without key pairs, without floating IPs, if we, if we have bastions running. And then you SSH into the VMs automatically using IP port pairs without the man in the middle at risk. And, and, and colleagues have access without sharing keys, and it's really easy to, to, to keep up with, with colleagues that come and go because you have this revoke button. Um, here are some reference commands that I was using. Um, and, uh, okay, so I'd like to spend a few minutes on the potential future work if I, if I have time. So I talked about bastion, bastions with VMs. I'd like to centralize the SSH audit logs so that you can see them all in one place. Who's been accessing? What have they been using? In theory, you'd even be able to see user by user um, what, what, uh, um, what, what they're doing in, in, the, in the host. Um, rotation of, of certificate authority keys. Rotation of host certificates, right? Um, installers, okay, that's, 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 a, that's a, an obvious one. And then one that I think is really interesting is I really don't think clients should have keys, certificates that are valid for a year or six months or even a month. 
it would be really nice if you had a web page where you sign, if, if from the web page in, in, in OpenStack, you signed in and it gave you a key pair and a certificate valid for an hour or a day, something reasonable, right? And then that's it. So single sign-on. And single sign-on lets you SSH, and maybe the SSH is a, is a web-based web SSH uh, client, right? It, not, not, not incredibly important. But actually, if you look at gravitational teleport, teleport has this feature of a client that does a handshake, single sign-on, and then installs a, 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 a certificate temporarily, and, and, and that's great. So the user never has to, to understand what a certificate is, actually, and it's, and it's really safe. Um, here are links to all the code. There are uh, demos, um, the demo video. There's a demo video of the uh, PAM module uh, in operation, and that's where you can find, uh, find me on IRC. That's it, Q&A. So I, uh, one of your diagrams had like seven round trips when you're launching a VM. Pardon? One of your diagrams showed about seven yeah. round trips launching a VM. Let's go back to that. Yes, you're right. Is it slower? <laughs> um, is it slower? The vendor, well. Is it, is that, it not so much slower that it changes the launch time noticeably? No, it, it, yeah, it doesn't. Because what, what I find it, it, uh, affects the launch time considerably is the init script. So the, your VM is not, is not, is not reachable for, for, for a longer time. These calls are pretty fast, so it's just, uh, yeah, API calls. Thanks, thanks for the clarification. Yeah, so I, I'm... So there are only two, there are only two um, demons. There's the um, two demons, and they're, uh, they're centralized. So I don't need a demon per, per, uh, per host, right? And I haven't done HA on these demons, so we have to, that's, that's a to-do. I didn't put it in my to-do list. Um, but basically, uh, it, it's the agent that's looking at background work, and it's the um, uh, and, and the and the API, uh, the API server. Now, generally, what I find is that it's really easy to see if if Keystone or Barbican or or designate or uh, if we have an error there, you just see that in the in the API server. So that's that's all sort of. Um, uh, it's not background processing. It's it's sort of reactive to the to the API calls. If instead something is broken in the scripts, um, that, that's a matter of, of, of going and debugging inside, inside the server. In that case, what would be perhaps a good practice would be to have one public key installed in, in, the, in, the, uh, um, in the default account for the server, such that you can always have a backdoor and, and get in even, uh, into an account with pseudo, pseudo privileges if the, other, if the rest of the account setup is, isn't accurate. And then what I have is, is basically there's a, um, there's a set of, um, hmm, where is it, one second. I, 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 I'm not finding it now, but there, there's a set of, so, so I, 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 as we said before, the uh, vendor data delivers <clears throat> some scripts to, um, to the server. Those scripts uh, have, have, uh, have uh, you know, do, do a lot of logging, and so I'll, I'll generally find the problem there. For example, the, the PAM module wasn't, wasn't passing its tests. I can see it right away. Port forwarding, will, will this break port forwarding? If you go through the back, so let me see. So generally, uh, okay, so I haven't thought very hard about how the Pat Bastion breaks, breaks things. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't thought about that. I do know that the jump proxy does not break that because the jump proxy is a tunnel within a tunnel and that is, is, uh, uh, is um, semantically correct. So you can pass, the, you can pass your, your options both to the external or the internal and everything is fine. I'll have to come back to you about the, about the Pat Bastion. I, I, fr I frankly thought of it, think the Pat Bastion is just a temporary thing to show that you can save on floating IPs and I, I never meant for that to go to production. 
Yes. Um, you mean so, so it could be used in other public clouds? Yeah, or bare metal, or things outside of OpenStack, or it's just, uh, like if we were to start managing access to certificates outside of this project, we have two systems doing that, right? One for the OpenStack, right. for instance, and then one outside. Um, so is, is it possible, not this context, but this sort of be like a one centralized area for it? I'd like to see that. I think, I think what we need to discuss is sort of, you know, how, how do we, uh, um, goodness, uh, Nova, I, I'm forgetting the name of the project. There's a project that, that, that uh, already exists for, for, for LDAP uh, integration uh, and, and, and um, seeding hosts with, with account uh, information. Um, I, Nova join? Pardon? Nova join? Nova join. Thank you. Um, but yes, so I was thinking about this more, more from the perspective of someone who doesn't have an LDAP server, right? Um, but I was thinking, you know, the same problem does exist in AWS and other public clouds. It would be nice to have drivers, uh, and, but I don't have a design for that. Uh, where, where, where Tattoo, right now Tattoo is, is, is tightly coupled with uh, Barbican and, and Nova and so on and so forth. Yeah. But I think it would be interesting if you tie into like pre IPA. Pre -IPA. <laughs> right. 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 Did you look at Free IPA? No, I didn't. Okay. So Adam Young, um, longtime Keystone developer, and uh, one of the first things we did with Federation was making sure that you could do um, SSSD and Kerberos. And so, an early blog post on exactly what Nova Join ended up being, which was how do I automatically enroll a host? And so, yeah, a lot of the things that you're talking about here. Uh, IPA was designed right. to uh, handle. And the thing I'd like you to think about, and I, I'd like to ask if you have think, thought about is, okay, so SSH is, is one protocol, but really what we need is security access, not just at the OpenStack layer, but at the apps deployed on top of it, right? So you need certificate management for all that kind of stuff. Um, and you also, you know, as you enroll new hosts and all that kind of, uh, kind of things. So what... Um, what were the parameters that you used to say, hey, we need to make a new one, because we have dog tag as a CA, and we have those things there. What was it that was so important that you wanted to make this part of OpenStack? Well, for one thing, there isn't any visual, I mean, there's no, there are no visual tools that I know of to do this right now, right? So, I mean, there's no single panel you can go to to set up your SSH today in OpenStack, right? Or at least it's not, well, not documented there, right? So you were thinking along the lines of how we do the, um, the, the console with a, uh, web sockets in, uh, in Horizon? So the console, yeah, but the console, so if I don't have a password, the, the console doesn't serve, right. me, serve me, right? Yeah. So the console is very, very often useless if you're doing proper exactly. SSH management. Right. So that's out. And then the only, the, the, today, the canonical way of using SSH, uh, SSH is without certificates, right? We have the Nova, the, the, right. the, the instance launch. Yeah. The instance launch says, here's a key pair, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe what I'm, maybe what you're saying is that uh, there are some pieces here that I could have avoided, that, that I shouldn't have built, and I could have built the, the visualization and the workflow around existing, existing uh, pieces, right? But in fact, it, so yeah, I... Yeah, right. I, I mean, it's, say, it's, it's, it's a tough I wanna, call. I, yeah, I, I yeah. But I, what, I, what I want to sort of say is, what I'm, I said earlier, this yeah. is like a prototype, right? right? So I'm not... Very, very little coding time has gone into yeah. this. It's more of a... You know, I'm throwing it out there to sort of say, how should we do this? Yeah. And absolutely, I'm, I'm not... Yeah. And, and I'm saying, so yes, absolutely... I'd want to see real uh, um, um, PKI uh, right. systems integrated. So take a take a look at what what we built with Nova Join because dealing with a lot of these same issues, you're, it's great to see you enumerate them, go through it. And I think you're coming from first principles. You you're you're, you're heading on the same path that, that we did before, and it, this is all very good, intelligent stuff. So I don't want to sound like I'm coming off critical, right. but. Uh, I'd rather have you engage with what we have going on because Nova Join is basically doing exactly that, using IPA as a way to be able to do the credentials management, all that. I also think that what you're doing, um, there, there's things that we could do just at the Nova level that I think would be better just for the straight key management, and I would love to have those discussions as well, which is like, 
Right now, you basically say, this is the key I'm going to inject into the instance when I bring it up. I would love those to be reusable resources because I want to be able to launch a VM that both you and I can SSH into. And we can't do that right now because it's my key and that's the only thing I see. No, I don't no, see no, the no, list of not, keys. I'm talking about Innova. Innova. Yeah. So there's um, things that we could do actually within the existing projects and that. Ah, sure, 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 sure. Absolutely. Projects. No, actually, I did speak to the yeah. uh, to, to to contributors of Nova, and it seemed to me that as a as a start, there wasn't going to be much discussion <laughs> of changing Nova. Yeah. Right. So I sort of said, okay, well, you know, I'll go show I'll go show ideas with mm -hmm. this project, and then I don't, you know, does it need to be a different project? Probably, you know, probably not. Right. Yeah. No, I, I understand. Trust me, I understand how hard I've been doing Keystone for a long time, and I get frustrated, so I understand how hard it's to put, push through this stuff. Uh, but this is cool. This is, I don't want to sound like I'm rain on your parade because this is good stuff and this is what we need. I just want to let you know that there is a larger more stuff. effort that we're, I, we're, we're, a lot of us are battling the same thing. I need to do my research. I'll, I'll do the research, yes. That's yes, yes, awesome, absolutely. great. Yep. Thank you.